Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week we have Jesse Crouch, benefits consultant with Steel Insurance Group. Joining me in studio as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. Look, I've been in sales for for more than 25 years. And one of the biggest things I finally get is that I'm I'm passionate about helping people. Yeah. For years, I always thought I was going to go into some type of medical field where I was going to be a nurse or I actually went to EMT training for about a year. And that's what my mom always said, you're, you're going to help people. Yeah. I just didn't know what that looked like. Right. But um, now, you know, seeing firsthand what families go through when somebody passes away, um, when somebody has some type of major illness, um, being able to be there for them during that time, meeting them at the ER or really the, the NICU. You know what? Don't worry about it. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. And putting money in their pocket when the last thing they need to be worrying about is getting back to work and they need to be taking care of their family. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about things that I've, I've been there and done that and, and been there for that family and to see them smile um, in, in the monks of their tears yeah. is unreal to be honest. Yeah. And yeah. so you, you did say you'd been in sales and, and so on the front end, it is a sales job, but on the back end, it's so rewarding. It is. It is. You know, on the front end, you, you do have to sell. And, and yeah. you know, so many people sell about a dollar, right? You know, I'm going to bring the best price. I'm going to bring the best price. But we, we've we led towards that so long, right? Yeah. But we've got away from the service side of it. And and people, I see it now more than ever that they're really starting to lean back towards the service product. You know, how do I serve my my employees better? How do I yeah. how do I serve my clients better? I, I can tell you, there's a trend going on right now where, and it happens to be more with people that pay a lot more of their insurance for their employees. Mm-hmm. That trend, but they're coming to me now and they're saying, I'm okay with paying more premium, but I want something better for my employees. Those are exactly the customers I'm looking for. Heck yeah, yeah. Because they're they're in it for the same reason I'm in it for. How do I make it? Yes, bottom dollar. It has to be affordable. But how do I make it to where your employees love it? It still protects your employees because that's where we really need to focus. Yeah, and they see it as a benefit. You, it you truly know? is a benefit. It is. You know, I mean, you know, you still have some young kids out there. That all they want to do is they want to make money, make money. But majority of those people are still underneath their parents, right? Yeah. But yeah. a true benefit is when an employee comes and say, "What benefits do you offer me? Yeah. How much do you pay of my insurance? How much is going to come out of my check?" Right. Yeah. To where, if something happens to me or something happens to my family, how much money do I have to put up? To receive services. Yeah, sure. You know, and, and, and that's where I, I, I truly get in there. I like to crunch the numbers, right? Like I told you, talked to you a second ago. I was like, I get passionate about when I see the numbers, but it's not necessarily how can I save the company money? I put together plans that, that are, that protect the family too. And, yeah, sure. And it's yeah. just, I, as you can see, I'm already smiling. I'm already getting yeah. excited about it. <laughs> I know. But not only do I try to protect the bottom line, yeah. but it, it's the focus on the families. Focus on the families, help. You, you, it's, it's a theme and it's not, it's your reality. And I go all the way back to when I first met you <laughs> and you were coaching my kids. Yeah, uh, baseball. Fun. Yeah, it's it's the best, right? It is. It but, is. But I I want to talk about how did you get here? This this desire to help, this desire to serve. Where did it come from? Yeah. So um, we we spoke a little bit about this, but you know, at, I'll tell you. Let's get personal, right? So on my mom's deathbed, I had started at Aflac, and she was like, "It's not going to pay you money. It's not going to do this, you know." And so she's like, "You need to stop paying." And I was actually about to go work for State Farm, believe it or not. Mm. So put my mom in the hospital and, um, you know, a week later she passed away. Then, then I really saw the benefit of what I can do to help families yeah. because right then and there, that's when my, myself and my brother, we had to deal with those type of expenses and, um, you know, vehicles that, that we got to try to figure out, okay, what do we do with her car? Okay. How do, how do we, how fast can we sell her home? These are expenses that families have to deal with right after they lose their family. Oh, yeah, wait. the worst possible times. Oh, wait, we still got to pay to bury these, yeah, your family yeah. members, right? Yeah, yeah. So firsthand we saw, and it was in the 70 to 80 thousands of dollars that we had to spend of our money. Yeah. Right. But the great thing is this, right? She had life insurance. Okay. 
So eventually we got paid that back. It's as little things as she had short-term disability. Great, great. You know, it, 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 it paid for the, the expenses that she had right then and there while she was still alive. She never had the cancer insurance. Yeah. So that seventy to eighty thousands of bills. I'm talking about bills, yeah. not not the home that we still had to pay, right? But bills. And so on. When I saw that, that the life insurance, or when I saw the the reality of if she would have had a cancer policy, maybe that seventy would have been a thirty five. Yeah. Sure. Thirty. So light bulb, right? Let. How can I get there? How can I continue bringing this back? And, and protect other families. Yeah. So that's how I stayed in the business. Believe it or not, like I said, my mom wanted me out. I saw it firsthand. Yeah, man. So now now that I saw that, I can create the passion of protecting and um, taking care of families. You know? yeah. so and that's what I focus on. How do you meet your clients or how do you attract your clients? Uh, to be honest, a lot of it these days are, are more of word of mouth. You yeah, know? sure. You built um, up a reputation. I've built up yeah. a reputation. I've, yeah. been in this, I've been in this type of the business for uh, over 10 years now. Yeah, got it. It's mainly reputation. And and not only that, so what, what we do at Steel as well is we come in and say, look, let us house all of your insurance, right? Mm-hmm. To where you can have one phone number to call, right? It makes it simple. Okay. Yeah, sure. You know, sure. You know, let's let's bundle it, right? But it's not true bundling because we can't really truly save you money on both sides, whether it's commercial or property and casualty, stuff like that. But I've been able to reach out to those clients as well and say, hey, look, we have a true benefits department now. Let us just look at it, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's see what we can do. You have insurance to protect your your employees one way. Let's see how we can protect your employees another way. Yeah. Right. So that's mainly, other than that, I just kind of go down the list and see who's local, who's not. Every now and then I'll focus on a certain type of business, Mm -hmm. right? If I already have a lot of these type of clients, I can easily come in and say, hey, I have a trend of my type of clients like this. Yeah. This is how I can come in and do the same thing for you. Let's meet. Yeah, that's good. Something simple as that. That's outstanding. Make a phone call. Switch gears. Where'd you grow up? Lafayette or? Born and raised, Lafayette, Louisiana. Lafayette. Cajun yeah, yeah, country. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, still love to cook. I uh, enjoy being around people. You know, I go wash my Cajuns as, as often as I possibly can. You know, yeah. having four children, it doesn't quite allow me to do that. But yeah. um, I never wanted to leave. No, know? I hear you. I hear you. It's, um, it's an amazing place. It is. And, you know, the culture here is unreal. And like I tell people, you know, when I'm sitting down with some employees every now and then, one of the most important things I talk to them about is really short-term disability, mm-hmm. right? Because we are South Louisiana. We love to take care of our own. But bottom line, right, your employer, your your boss can only take care of you as much as they can and can only continue to stay afloat as a company as much as he can. Yeah. So take that burden away from them. Take that burden away from yourself. Look at short-term disability. Yeah, it's yeah, important. Yeah. You yeah. want to continue paying, being able to pay the bills that you have now. Why would you want to change your family's lifestyle just in case you, you can't work? Yeah, right? yeah, correct. So, so, so that, I, I guess, just so we understand, we all understand long-term disability, but short-term is a supplement to- yeah, so short-term disability. Or workers' comp? Or, or, well, no, so workers' comp, you know, if you get in, injured on, on the job, right, workers' comp is going to pay your, your medical bills and, yeah. and, and help put money in your pocket if yeah. you get paid on it. But if you get injured off the job, right? Oh, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, injured, yeah, okay. Look, I'm out there coaching the kids, right? I'm running around being crazy like I normally am and having fun with them. And all of a sudden, I twist an ankle. Yeah. Well, that, I, can't, I can't go to workers' comp for that. How, what do I have in place for that? What yeah, policies I do I have in place for that? Believe me, I have all the policies. I'm one of what you call insurance poor, right? Mm-hmm. I have the accident policy. I have the cancer policy. I have the short-term disability policy, yep. right? But And that's going to help me put food on the table, continue paying my bills because I get a percentage of my income. And it's not, you don't get 100% of your income because it's not out there to go pay you 100% and go live lavishly and, and go continue going out to dinner while, you, while you're trying to recover. No, it's the focus is let's continue paying your bills, but let's get you back to work. Yeah, no doubt Let's about get it. you back to doing what you love doing, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what short-term disability is about right there. Yeah. But again, that's, it's just another type of policy. It's just another type of tool to help protect your customers, your, your help protect my customers, help protect employees and get people back to doing what they love doing. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's, that's the passion. That's where my passion comes in. That, right that is. And, yeah. and like you said, it, it is about passion. And if you have that, it's one thing to go out, talk to people and do all that, but you're really and truly delivering something of value, you know, and, and they're truly helping people. And again, like I said, just go and talk to people. And I, I, yeah. it goes back to my Cajun heritage, right? Let's yeah. just talk. Like, yeah. And look, I mean, I can talk like that if you want me to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If it makes you feel better, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, just having that conversation. And majority of the time, I'm not the one talking in the conversation. 
Yeah. So, so I, I, I want to here, here's a light bulb moment, right? Okay. I look at business today and, and I was talking with one of my boys earlier. It's about relationships. You don't have to sell if you can build a relationship with your client and, and truly want to help them. And they, they earn that trust. I'm going to say that your first job is about a relationship that gets you in the foot in the door and then you create more relationships. Without a doubt. Sales is relationships. Uh, talk to me about that. And, and why does it come so natural to you? You've kind of mentioned the culture, but you're pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, it's a culture. I mean, but part of it's even as simple as this. When I'm out with friends, I don't talk business. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. I don't talk business. Yeah. And I can tell you, one of my buddies once told me that, and I just met him kind of, he's now my buddy, right? I just met him through my, my marriage. Right. And so we, we, we go out together and I never brought up business. That being said, real quickly, you ask me a question, all hands off. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I will go I'll into sales the- <laughs> mode at that point in time. <laughs> yeah. But believe it or not, there's a there's a time, there's a line, right? Yeah. And you got to know when to cross it. I don't want to be that guy that walks up to a bunch of buddies of mine and be like, oh, man, here uh, comes Jesse. Yeah, uh, he's, they're turning and-, and No, oh, okay. you leave that aside. There's a time where, you, where there's business and there's pleasure, right? Yeah, sure. So, but yeah, you walk up and it's it's 100% what you just said, yeah. right? It's relationships. Okay. Yep. I pride myself as if I, if I shake, I'm old school. Mm-hmm. I'm going to shake your hand. I can't tell you how many times I'd rather walk into a business, shake your hand and say, my name's Jesse Crouch. I do this. It's great meeting you. Have a great day. I won't talk more than that. Yeah, sure. I'm creating a relationship. Yep. I want you to see me. I want you to hear me. Yep. And I may not even talk business. I just might learn about your business and walk away. And I do might just say, wait, what are you selling? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm selling? This. Yeah. Yeah. Me. You. This relationship. I'm telling you, the world needs to hear it because everybody wants to go in and, and sell a widget, sell a widget. Yeah. They got to get to know you and what makes you tick. And they got to, it's very it, common, no like and trust you, right? But then you can talk business. I, I want them to know me and then figure out what I do for work, <laughs> you know? Well, that's like we said, you, you brought up my coaching. I yeah. can tell you how many times where- I, I can still barely have maybe four or five people that I've coached in the past with their parents as clients. Yeah. I've kept that separate. And, and, but the great thing is this, they saw the passion of me being able to go coach their kids. Right? Yeah. They saw the passion. I put, I put the time. I'll, I'll oh, go golly, research. It's, it's insane amount of time to coach. It's, kids. Amount, it's crazy, but I'll put the time to even go and learn even the latest and greatest skills yeah. tests and, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and drills to try to push your kids, right? If they're not being pushed right here and not being challenged, yeah. how do they know, know what to do that as a, when they get older? No no doubt about it. Right? And so, I hear your coaching days aren't over. No, no, they're not <laughs> over. I got a three-year-old and a one-year-old. So guess what? Soccer starts back again. Well, actually, it already started with, with T-ball last That's season. That's right. So I think uh, 2018 and then three and one. That's correct. That's Dude. correct. Yeah. 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 I started he, all over again, but it's again. been great. Um, yeah. You know, it's, like I said, it's a new level. When the 20 year old and 18 year old were this, this age, you, you're trying to figure out how do you put food on the table? How do I make sure I pay my mortgage? That's and, right. And I can tell you, there, there's been times that was when, that was when I was in medical sales, right? Mm-hmm. And there's been times where I'll wake up in the morning, they'll still be sleeping. I'll get back at night, they'll, they'll be back they'll sleeping be going again. To sleep, yeah. I won't see them yeah. awake for days yeah. Yeah. Um, because you got to put in a grind. I mean, one of my best friends um, told me, you got to put in at least two to three years. Put it in, grind for two to three years, and you'll create a, a book of business. You'll create a customer base to where they'll continue growing your business for you. Oh, yeah. It's it, word of mouth. It but is. I mean, you got to keep up the quality and you got to provide customer service. You gotta, look, bottom line, you got to provide a service. I absolutely. Mean, um, you got to be there yeah. when the phone calls, right? I mean, not all their employees get my cell number, Yeah. but every owner, every HR, everybody it's my cell phone number. And look, that hasn't changed since I was 16. Yeah, It's yeah. the same phone numbers. That, that was a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> so, but the great thing is answer the phone. Or if you don't yeah, answer, yeah, because there's times, right? There's times you got to be with family, but answer the phone or call them back within 12 to 24 hours. Right. And what, that's, do you, what do you think's changed with, co- I have my theories on customer service and I think it's dying and it's sad to watch, but what do you think about customer service today and why, why is it going south? Uh, you know what? I can you can say that people are going too much technology. Okay, okay? and yeah. it's funny to hear that from me that I graduated in, in a computer networking degree from UL. <laughs> oh, right? Wow! But um, it, it really is a lot of it is technology. I mean, look, this AI stuff. I mean, that can be a whole nother conversation. It but is. Yeah. Again, people are getting away from the human touch. Right. This this type of community 
uh, customer service that you can sit down with somebody and say, you know what, you could pick up a phone and talk to somebody over the phone instead of just sending an email. I can't tell you how many times I'll receive an email and I'll send an email right back, call you in a second. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Because I want to hear it on their side of the on, on their side of the yep, phone. Yep. I want to hear how passionate they are about this problem, right? So I pride myself on being able to just reading people. And that's why I'd rather walk in a door and read your your response to where I just say, hi, my name is Jesse Crouch. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, so yeah. it's the same thing on customer service. How can I read my customer on how to deal with this customer service? It's just as simple as picking up a phone. As simple as responding back an email real quickly. Yeah, and and, yeah. and now that, yeah, look, good customer service means I'm figuring out the problem, right? And, yeah, and, yeah. and solutions. But so many people lead, and, and this is what I think what's killing it as well is, so many people get on the defensive whenever there's a problem, mm-hmm. okay? And one of my best managers in the world I ever met was, what's the problem? How do we fix it? How do we make sure it doesn't happen again? Absolutely. People get away from those three there things. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I get it. I finally get it. Here at Company Growth Academy, we've begun teaching 20-minute growth strategies. They're free, they're fast, and they're full of information to help you grow your company. For more information and to sign up for our advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. Let's get it. People get away from those three things right there. It's not, why did you do that? Why? What? Don't, get, don't yell at me. And, yeah, and yeah. it's pointless. It's pointless to yell. You know, yeah. I promise you, when I call a carrier, when I have a problem, they know there's a problem. Yeah, sure. Right? Sure. Some carriers will tell you that uh, Jesse's my favorite broker to work with. Why? He never yells at me. He never fusses at me. He yeah. calls me when I have problems, but what's the point? Yeah, what's no point doubt about it. Yep. There's no point in it. Let's, let's figure out how to, how to fix the problem and let's figure out how to make sure it doesn't happen again. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the customer yeah. service everybody needs to get back to. Yeah. And that's the customer service I focus on to bring to my customers. And my people. And, and then I would say follow up. You know, we got to follow up with our, our clients. Otherwise, yeah. there it was an event, yes. right? And then you yes. got to follow up, see how things are going. And and that's where that, technology that, can really kick in for that. A follow yeah, up can still automated, easily be a, yeah. an email. Yeah, sure. You know, one of my biggest things I love doing is I, I like to get my uh, account manager. I said, look, this is what I need you to do. Go put everybody's birthday in a system right, right. yeah and i want you because i create the relationship they come into us because of my relationship i want you to create a relationship with all my clients and i want you to be first point of contact because yes i'm on the road a lot but mm-hmm. just send them an email yeah, correct. hey man happy birthday Hope yeah you're just thinking day. about it <laughs> yeah you know how many smiles that's gonna be put on and that's the biggest thing how many smiles can you put on somebody's face <laughs> that's what's big these days right that's, that's good cu- that's customer service if i can put Smiles on people's faces. If I can make sure that they can get a hold of me at any point in the day, yeah, that's I, I won right yeah, there. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. There's you no won doubt. because you differentiate yourself from everybody else. How do you think the lack of a better way to say it, the online insurance industry? I mean they they can't see you face to face. I mean <laughs> maybe they can dispatch somebody later, but yeah. I mean, look. I mean, bottom line is. Um, I, COVID kind of taught us a little bit about that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, people couldn't come out to you. Yeah. You know, you couldn't come see you, couldn't touch you, couldn't get around you. And, and um, I think that's why I think people are coming back to that type of deal and they're going to get away from a lot of that. Yeah, the people are, there's still those cu- those customers out there. Uh, the dollar means the most to me, yeah, right? Sure, sure. But I can promise you they're having turnover. And there's no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and, it and it cycles back. It does. And, and I'm hoping that not only in your business, uh, you know, we see a change in, in service level, but in others, I mean, I can go to some unnamed supermarkets, uh, bag my own groceries. Yeah. They look at me like I'm stealing and then they don't say thank you when I leave. It's just, it, it drives me crazy. No, so like I said, I'm, I'm old school. Yeah. You know, I used to have this thing on my computer where I can, I can calculate, okay, well, you have roughly 10 people that you have to hire every year because you lost that many people. And mm-hmm. I can tell you that this is going to, co- this is costing you this much money because you're having to rehire and spend time on training and taking time away from somebody else to go train this person. And, you know, there's a dollar amount that that averages out to. And sure. I used to have that calculator. I still have it somewhere, I promise you, but it's as little as that's why my department's called benefits. It, yeah, yeah. it truly needs to be a benefit for your employees, yep. right? Other than that, it's just called insurance. 
right? <laughs> who wants to sell insurance, right? Yeah, nobody. Who yeah, likes yeah. insurance, yeah. right? I know how to kill a conversation, insurance. <laughs> I mean, okay, we're done. <laughs> but, it, but you know, what I tell people is like, who who likes to deal with insurance? I don't even like to deal with insurance. Yeah, sure. But, but why don't you do it with somebody you trust? Why don't you do it with somebody that you have a relationship with that you can go to and say, hey, Jesse, what's the deal with this? Yeah, yeah. But you don't correct, have any problems correct. asking questions. Yeah. Ask the question. Somebody just told me, a new client was just like, I'm not, we're going to ask some stupid questions. I said, I'll look forward to it. Mm-hmm. You know, because if you're asking those questions, that means you've never had a broker that properly teach you how to do it. There you go. And yeah. education, communication is key. Big In deal, any man. business, yeah, it's key. Yeah, no doubt about it. But education, yeah. without a doubt. And, and that's one thing that Aflac taught me the biggest thing about is education. And I guess you can go bring it back all the way back to uh, my sales days in, in, in orthopedic sales, right? Mm-hmm. I once was doing a surgery and the doctor needed a, a drill bit. And I was like, well, hold on, let me get you the right drill bit. And I opened up the book and I look at the book. He's like, what, you don't know that? I said, I might know it, I but I'd rather tell you the right. I'd rather educate myself to make sure I'm telling you the right number. Because if I tell you the wrong number, that's catastrophic in this surgery. Yeah, sure. So let me let me educate myself. So learn uh, how to educate myself. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Continue we, to educate. We as, as business owners, entrepreneurs, in that way you are an independent contractor. We have to know everything. And if we don't know, we got to go find out how to get it. You got to know where to go. Yeah. Right? And you got to be okay with going to it. Yeah. Like I'd rather figure out the correct answer than to give you BS and that's going to come back to bite me later. later, Oh yeah. And the patient. I mean, and and, and the doctor. Well, you know, there's, there's backup screws, blah, blah, blah. We could have gone to, but still let's do it right. The first time. I love that story. That's true. You know, so educate yourself that way you could properly educate your customers, probably properly educate your, my my clients as far as employees. Yeah. You'll you'll never regret knowing the right way to do it. No. And, I mean, and, and in my business, the funny thing is half the time the education is this policy pays this much on this much, this much. That's not even education that they're looking for. The education that they're looking for is, hey, I break my ankle. How bad is that going to put me back? Well, you know what? Now that you have this accident policy, it won't. Yeah. I mean, How about that? How about my, my son falling off the roof and we got up over $180 in a hole and Aflac gives me back 120 Yeah. And I talk about Aflac only because that's where, I, that's where I started, right? But whether it's Colonial, whether it's MetLife, whether it's Mutual of Omaha, all these policies pay the same, right? Yeah. The question is, but Aflac used to be the best customer service. But the difference is this. So many brokers like myself are providing so many different plans like this. It doesn't no longer need to, need to be Aflac anymore. It could still yeah, be yeah, Aflac, sure, sure. right? It's the name, right? But because I'm giving you Mutual of Omaha accent, you still get my customer service. Yeah, you yeah. still get me helping you with the client. Yeah, and, and that's the name of the game. It is. It is. So what's next for uh, Jesse? To be honest, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out uh, new ways to, to help my clients, right? right. Um, bottom line, uh, I was talking about this the other day, is how can I, how can really, how can I truly bundle a PNC business with the benefits business. Got it. And there, there's ways to do it on the back end. Um, so that that's what kind of what my focus wants to be. Now, of course, it has to be more of new clients, right? To be able to go say, hey, look, who has your PNC? Who has your DIS? Um, and I, I think I figured out a way. I I don't want to kind of spill the beans no, about man, it, you know. You have but, to come back um, once you figure it out. Oh, look, I can. I think I can figure. I'm like I can tell you how to figure it out right now. But I tell you too many, too much of my, uh, you know, competitors how to do it, then uh, they would you. steal the deal. But I think there is truly a way to to bundle uh, PNC and uh, benefits department together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, it has to fit. And just like 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 when I tell people and clients that we have this type of policy or this type of policy, um, and we can go look at that for, for and this would be better prices, has to fit. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it has to serve the client. It has to serve the client. And that's yeah. what I mean. That's what exactly what I mean about fit. Like I can give you the best prices, but it won't fit. Yeah. Right? You'll yeah. be back at me next year, be like, Jesse, why did you put this in with me? Yeah. You want a dollar. Right, you wanted the, the the lowest amount possible, yeah. and that's not what I'm bringing you. I'm bringing you what benefit, a true benefit, can yeah. can benefit my employees at the affordable price. Of course, I can't. I don't want to put you out of business, right? But yeah. Sure. yeah. Sure. Um, but the next thing is is trying to enhance my benefit portfolio of not just 
policy wise, but partnerships, right? Yeah. Um, and we have created some great partnerships with me and the PNC producers at Steel. Look, I love Steel. You know, I've only been there for three years, but they've they've had my back from day one. They said, what do you need? What what how can we help you grow? And we've grown the grown the business threefold, right? Jeez. Um by by just having that support. And they're a truly family ran business. Yeah. yeah. Right. I love um, that. They come to me, hey, how are you how are you? Right. And and how many how many bosses do that these That's, days? As it should be. Yeah, you know? I got to get him on the show. He'd be great, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Donnie would be great. Um, so Donnie Steele, he's the grandson of the original David H. Steele that opened it up. So he's our COO. He kind of runs, oversees everything. Big Don and um, and Hal are still in the mix, right? Okay. Um, they t- still take care of their customers. They're not out knocking on doors like I am, right? But <laughs> well, they're doing what they should be doing. At, at that they stage. are, you know, at their age, kind of laying, you know, sitting back, watching the watching the family grow. Right? I love it, man. And, That's and great. Not only that, I mean, look, the the sister, the the cousins, they're all in it. Yeah. You know, if if they didn't love insurance and what they do for people. Why would their family be be involved? Yeah, in no it? doubt about it. You know, there's lots of people that say, yeah. keep them away from that. Well, yeah. my mom, Oldfield, my family, my dad's side of the business was nothing but Oldfield. Yeah. And my mom was like, no, you're not going Oldfield, right? There's too much of that big wave up and down, up and down, and, and you'll be stuck. You never go. That get was you, true. You no. never go get your degree. You never, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm one of the first crouches to graduate from college. You know, nice. and I stayed away from the Oldfield. You know, would I still go into the Oldfield at some point? You know, if some kind of business came about and some opportunity. Um, I'd love to be a part of it, right? Um, because it did it did do great for my family in the long run. But yeah, sure. just like the insurance business, just like anything else, you can't look at it for a quick fix, right? You've got to make the marathon. Yeah. Create the marathon. Yeah. Don't run the sprint. And that's what I'm in here for. I'm in for when I first got hired on with Steel, I told you, hey, look, my last name ain't Steel, but I'm gonna treat it like Steel. And I ain't going nowhere. That's wonderful, bro. So yeah. Let's say you got a young guy coming out of college, he wants to get in the benefits business. What's some advice you would give me? Yeah, man, don't give up, right? Times are hard across the board for everybody. Yeah. Um, so if you can sit there and, and, and put in the grind, work hard, work hard. This, this business is not a, a get rich quick thing. Yes, you can make some money real quick, real fast. Don't give up. It is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. You've got to, if, you've got to look at it as this is your door for so many other opportunities, right? I mean- I've been doing this for over 10 years now. I, I do have some other businesses, right? Um, I've got some real estate where we've got some rental properties and it's allowed me to do that, you know, but, um, and I, I'm looking into other, you know, making sure I'm diverse. Right? Yeah, good. Because at some point I don't want to be doing insurance for my whole life, right? But there's so many kids out there that start something and they finish it and they don't ever finish it, right? And it's true. Start yeah. it, see it through. And it's not for everybody, but see it through. See if it truly is for you. Um, and try not to jump, jump ship, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm still old school where it comes to where, look, I, look the past 10 years, I've probably had four or five jobs. And I say that, I mean, I've been at Aflac for 10 years straight, but I, I, my main position has moved around and, and that has killed me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was at, I was at strike orthopedics for 11 years. I didn't really want to leave, but it was kind of bottlenecked. There was no growth availability yeah, sure. after 10 years. So I was like, okay, great. Let me see, let me go fall back on my my uh, my degree, and I did that for almost a year in the oil field. I, well, there you go. There's my one my oil field. I worked for an oil field company, but I did computer administrator, so I didn't really yeah. work yeah. in sales or an oil field. But and then they went under, you yeah. know. And then that's when Affleck called me. Um, my, my resume was on Monster Jobs, and. I literally told the dude on the phone, no, I ain't selling insurance. <laughs> and then look at me 10 years later. There but you I, go. Yeah, I, but I don't look right. at it selling insurance, like I said. Yeah, it's it, it's helping people. You know? it, it's, it's, it's helping people. What yeah. I truly do, yes, does it cost money? Yes, it costs money. But there's a reason why they created these policies. And there's a reason why they're still here. Mm-hmm. When, when was, so Affleck was you know, created in 1955. Was so, it really? There's a reason why they're still here. Yeah, sure. Because oh no, they, they solve the problem work. out there. Yeah. Because they work. Yeah, you know? no doubt about it. With all the people you you reach uh, during your day from kids you coach all <laughs> the way to to clients you serve, how do you try to leave them different and better than before they encountered you? Yeah, so I mean it's just about um putting that smile on their face, right? If I can um somehow enhance their mood, if I can then somehow um teach them something new. If I can answer those stupid questions, right? Yeah. Um, if I can get them, create their knowledge as well. 
and, and what I do or just like my kids, right? Create the knowledge on maybe we shouldn't have made that decision to uh, jump from here to there and you didn't make it, right? Um, it's something as simple as that. I mean, you look at my older kids, it's what should they do, right? They have no idea what they want to do when they grow up. Try to help them steer in a certain direction to making those better decisions. But putting a smile on their face, make sure people know that I'm, uh, you know, maybe I don't love everybody, but make sure I'm passionate about they know that I care about everybody. Thanks for joining us on I Finally Get It. For more information on Jesse and what he's got going on, please visit our show notes. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Hey, look, at Company Growth Academy, we have started doing 20-minute teachings. These are 20-minute growth strategies, and we do one every single month. It's easy to sign up to be on the advanced notification list. Just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. If you're a business owner and you have a light bulb moment that can help other business owners, please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.